Well, tomorrow, when President Biden signs the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill into law, voters from every state will benefit. That's only because 19 Republican senators and 13 Republican representatives took a stand and crossed the aisle to pass this legislation. For the record, 230 Republicans in both chambers voted against much needed improvements to the nation's roads and bridges, internet, water and energy systems. Republicans let Congresswoman Nancy Mace from South Carolina, whose state gets a D plus in 2021 from infrastructurereportcard.org. On the day of the infrastructure vote in the House, she tweeted about flooding in her district and the risk of flood damage in places like Charleston, saying, quote, we need to tackle this problem head on. But instead of tackling this problem head on, Congresswoman Mace voted against the bill. This $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill isn't true infrastructure. Like, if we're going to do infrastructure, let's do infrastructure. Truly, for me, this was really hyperpartisan, not a bipartisan bill. South Carolina is set to get a reported $6 billion to help fix these problems. And then there's Kentucky. That is a state that has a C- from infrastructurereportcard.org and home to the Brent Spence Bridge, which connects northern Kentucky to Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, past presidents have tried to do something about the gridlock tied to this bridge for years. President Obama went there in 2011 when he tried to pitch infrastructure. And earlier this year at a CNN town hall in Cincinnati, President Biden brought up that bridge and others like it. You take a look at Ohio and Kentucky combined, there's well over, there's thousands of bridges that need repair. Thousands, thousands of bridges. And we should be looking at it this way. It increases commerce, number one, but guess what? They're good paying union jobs. But that didn't stop Kentucky Republican Congressman Thomas Massey from voting against the bill, even though a $2.7 billion plan to build a second bridge to ease the traffic could be funded in part by the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Some of those 32 Republicans who made the decision across the aisle and backed this legislation are doing so at a political cost, being threatened, targeted as traitors from members of their own party. And there are even suggestions that some of those Republicans lose their committee assignments as punishment for backing the bill. Republican Congressman Tom Reed of New York, who voted in favor of the bill, told me this yesterday. Do you think the pressure for party over country right now is influencing votes in your party? Uh, I, I would agree with that in the sense of it is it is easy to vote no. You can always find a reason to vote no. It's hard to govern and vote yes, especially when you're going against your own party. But you need that independent voice in Congress more than now, more than ever. So I just encourage my colleagues, especially many of them that wanted to vote for this le legislation, and we're very happy it has passed. They're kind of the vote no, hope yes uh, group. And I'll just tell you, uh, we need to have leadership stepping forward in Washington, D.C. So there you heard it. He raises the question, do these Republicans who voted against the bill just want the benefit from it without paying the political price?